Merci. It's been great interviewing the neighborhood framework because the writing also like learning new things. My favorite thing it has been um, learning more about filming and photography, things like that. You know, because I was I've always been interested in those kind of things, but like with the help of Jay and Damon, um, like. I've learned a lot that I didn't know before, like how to um, set up a camera and like the different features on the camera. The worst part is like interviewing, boring interviewing, like boring interviewing other people, like how they don't explain more of what they sent. Investigating for the neighborhood framework, I, I can say it's going like, it's been pretty great. Uh, interviewing different people in like Detroit, um, workers and like top Detroit workers like going to the Comey Young Center. It's been like a good experience and talking to them and getting information about like their different jobs. We get to get a point of view of people that we never met before and the people that's behind the stuff that's actually a part of what makes Detroit Detroit. So we met people that works on blighted houses, people that fix the potholes, people that go and investigate the houses to tell the people that them demolished the houses was wrong with it. So it's like, okay. But most of the time, even though they say they do all this stuff, as long as I've been alive, same houses that's been boarding up still ain't been demolished. You just got houses with boards on them saying we'll fix it eventually on there. So it's pretty much like, what they gonna do about it? Seeing how bad some parts of the neighborhood are, like the abandoned houses, all the trash, you know, um, seeing like all the messed up parts and things like that, and knowing that like it's not really anything that people have done about it, that's like kind of been the hardest part. I really enjoy it. I just like doing something activity. I like doing something active. It's very fun. I really enjoy it. The best part is going around and interviewing some famous people in Detroit. Worst part? Well, I can't say there's a worst part because I've not found one yet. Me being the person I am, I'm really shy when I really don't know you. So I had to get used to talking to different people and like opening up and like interviewing. So like that was one of the worst parts for me personally, which was uh, opening up and talking to different people. The different buildings that are around here, like before this, I've never been like on that side of West Chicago before. So, you know, learning about St. Suzanne and things like that. Worst parts is I lost some of my time, but I wouldn't say lost. I would say I put it to something different than I usually do. So instead of like hanging around with friends and stuff, I actually was getting to know my community more and actually seeing what we need changes and actually opened my mind to a lot of things like the roads, yes, they're concerns, but I never had the option to, opportunity to actually express those with the people that's in charge so they can fix it. So now I do, so I think, yeah. Good evening, good evening. Are y'all enjoying yourselves tonight so far? That's good, that's good. My name is Alexia Stoner, and tonight I'll be talking to you all about making Cody Rouge and Warndale the best places for young people. So in this picture is a picture of McDonald's. Do any of y'all know where this McDonald's is located? I hope y'all all do. So as y'all know, if y'all ever seen, like teens be super packed at this McDonald's, inside the McDonald's and outside the McDonald's. And this could prove that there's not a lot of places for young people to go to hang out. So they just decide to pile up in the McDonald's even if they don't buy anything. This is a picture of Henderson Park. Um, as you can see in the picture, Henderson really got like a whole field of stuff and really don't have no playground except for like one little play playground. So there's not much to do there. So a lot of kids do not go to there because there's really nothing to do. This is a picture of Stein Park. Um, recently in October, I helped a team of volunteers as well as Kaboom rebuild Stein Park for um, people ages, like younger ages, as well as teenagers, to have things to do for all ages, pretty much. Okay. This is also a picture of Stein Park. As you can see in the picture, we have all this field area, and we have 
this sad, lonely, incomplete sidewalk. Do y'all like our incomplete sidewalks? Do y'all like walking in the grass or in the street to get where you have to go? So what if we had wider sidewalks? Sidewalks in all the areas where we wouldn't just have to walk on a little incomplete sidewalk or walk in the street or walk in the grass. Like, who wants to do that? <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is a picture of Rouge Park. Rouge Park is the largest park in Detroit. This is also a picture of Rouge Park. Rouge Park have a horse thing, so if y'all like riding horses, I advise y'all to go there. This is a picture of Seminac Park. So Seminac Park have abandoned houses by it, abandoned fields, abandoned cars, and a lot of parents don't like their kids be, being surrounded about, around that type of things because that's like a bad environment. Who would want their kids to play in that type of area when there's so much negativity going on around it? Because I would not want my kid playing around that stuff. I don't know stuff. Okay, this is a picture of the Detroit Public Library. I heard that it have great programs aside for the youth, and I heard they do a lot like poetry and so on, so I advise y'all to check it out. Okay, this is a picture of the Boys and Girls Club, which we are in now, which is a place for youth and teens to come after school to get help with their homework, um, have fun with some games, and so on. Okay, going back to the first slide, as I was saying that there's not a lot of things for the teens to do, what if we had like outdoor performing stage for teens to, um, for teens to perform and you know, show their talents? Tying to that, I have a short written piece that I wrote that I'm saying now. We see a lot of red. We hear a lot of hot firing bullets. We all get those heartbreaking calls, stating that our loved ones are gone. We all see the streets that's not even safe to drive on, streets that's not even safe to walk across, speeding drivers becoming sudden killers. What do we have to do to make the demon safe? Y'all say y'all want better. Well, let me see y'all actions. Let me hear y'all voice that have power. Let's have better education so there will be more graduates and less drop dropouts. Let us have programs that explores youth talents. Let us have more businesses in the area so we won't have to go out to the suburbs. Let us have better parks where the grass is cut low and don't stand high. A park with play sets that are, that are new and not old. A park for all ages and not just one. If I told you you could better your community, would you do it? You have the power in your hands. Use the power that you have to make your community the way you want it, that you thought could only happen in your dreams. Make a change in your community. Make a change in the D. Thank you. And with that being said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that being said, I'm going to now pass the mic to Rodney.